see a little bit of shadow. A little bit of, bit of shadow goes a long way into helping your image have more depth and to have more dynamics, which is what you want. Uh, but you don't need a lot of shadow, just a little bit. So having this not as bright as the key light helps to make your shot look more dynamic. You know, if, if you know, people will start to notice the features of your face standing out more. And it'll make you look more, uh, just more dynamic in general. I like the word dynamic. It's a good word. <laughs> the other thing that I do sometimes is sometimes I bring my fill light down a little bit. Now, Tim's face um, is very easy to light. But my face is not because my eyes are very deep. And sometimes if the light is 45 degrees above me, it'll create shadows. So different people have different types of faces. Um, and sometimes if you have a big forehead like mine, you're going to have shadows over your eyes. Tim has a very easy face to light. Um, it, I, in fact, it's, I don't even, if I keep this up here, it's going to look just fine. But sometimes if somebody's wearing a hat or they just have deeper eyes like mine, you can bring the light down and it'll fill some of those shadows that are created on the face. So, a little ninja tip for lighting there. Anybody have any questions about lighting so far? I have a question. Uh, What's up, Tim? When do you use uh, light on top? Like a uh, top light? Yeah. Um, I tend to use that in more specific uh, situations if I'm trying to create a theatrical look. So, for example, if I was shooting a commercial and the person in the commercial was supposed to be an actor on a uh, theater stage, then I would put a top light above them to make it look like they're in a play. Most of the time I don't do that. Um, and there are some other creative times where that might come in handy. Uh, but having the light actually come from behind you actually helps a lot more with that grim effect. And you might talk to another cinematographer who has might think of about a dozen more reasons why I can, why you would do a top light. But there is a time and a place for it. Cool. Any other questions about lighting? Yes, she is. She oh, okay. Uh, about me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, You're looking out for each other. I like it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, great. So, um, window light, natural light. Mm -hmm. How do we use it? That's an excellent question. I'm glad you brought it up. Um, so you, the question is, how do you use natural light from a window? I'm actually going to turn this light off. So, all right, guys, give Tim a big round of applause. He did a great job. Today. So typically, um, natural light is the best light when you can get it. It's already diffused. It's already bright. Um, it, it's just, it's gonna, it's not gonna leave hard shadows, it's gonna leave soft shadows. Um, so what I do is I try to position myself, if, if I'm in a room with a window, I try to position myself in relation to where the window is gonna be. So if I know, for example, if I know that the window is right there, I'm just gonna pretend like that window goes outside and there's a lot of sunlight flooding in. I'm going to try to sit somewhere where this window can be my key of light. And I'm going to, tr or I'm going to have it tr try to sit somewhere where it's either coming in and hitting this side of my face or this side of my face because I want to use that light to the best of my ability. And then if I have lights, I'll use those as my key light and my rim light. That yeah, but do we still need that, or just as fully? It really kind of depends on the room. Okay. So, if you if you um, if you're able to sit in a place and take a video, and you look at the shot and it looks great, and you don't need these lights, that's fine. Go with that. Okay. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm all, the the reason that we have these lights is to make up for the fact that we don't always have windows where we need them. Is the same uh, philosophy for video lighting and uh, a photography lighting? They're very similar. The, the, the key concept of three-point lighting that I just explained, that applies directly to photography as well. 
There are some more nuanced concepts that are different about video lighting and photography lighting, but the main concept, that three-point lighting, that's going to apply across the board. Yeah, my question is, a lot of times we're probably not able to do, you know, such in such a professional way. Mm -hmm. We just want to take a quick read. Right. Uh, I noticed a lot of broker, broker, they actually use uh, the room light, the LED room light. Okay. So I, I, I don't know what sure. you suggest uh, regarding those kinds of So your, your question was about the rim light? The no, the room light. The drone like, light. It's like a room. The ring, ring, the ring light. Yeah, yes, okay. Ring light, I, I was thinking I ring light, and I said rim light. So no, I okay. I get what yeah. you mean now. So yes, ring light is another um, very popular light to use, and I don't have an example of one with me today. Uh, but if you Google ring light, it'll be the first thing that comes up. It's just it's literally a light that's in a circle like this. Right. And the reason that the light is designed like that is because the light that shines onto your face is coming from a wider uh, wider range of direction than if you just have one traditional light that's just hitting you, you know, in, in a straight line. So you have light coming from all the different points of that ring and it's causing a nice, softer look on your face. You're not getting any hard shadows. So yes, a ring light is a very good option as well. In fact, um, it's one that a lot of YouTubers, a lot of people on Instagram, um, it gets used all the time. So um, I would I would even recommend a rim light, yes, a ring light. I don't know why I keep calling it a rim light today. Any, any more questions? You say the three point, um, three light point, mm -hmm. do you mean we need three, um, three, the, the three light at the same time? And yes. Okay. So the three point is that you know the three lights are shining on you at the same time, okay. and when you have the three lights, it actually imitates what if you're outside in sunlight. It actually kind of imitates what that looks like, because we have one main source of light that's the sun, and the sun is the brightest point, and it causes the most light on your face. But we also have another source of light that's called the atmosphere. So we have, in the sky, we have a, you know, a few miles of oxygen above us, and the light is actually traveling through the atmosphere and being split up, and it's bouncing off, and, and, and what ends up happening is you also have light coming from behind you, and light coming from your side. So you don't have just one straight line of light hitting your face, but there's actually light coming from all around you when you're outside because of the atmosphere and the way that the light travels through the Earth's atmosphere. Um, but there's definitely one main source, and that's why when you're doing your three-point lighting, you have one light that's brighter than the others. as to imitate what our eyes are used to seeing when we're looking at people outside. It's to create more of a natural look. So, excellent question. All right, so we've talked about how to set up your camera, and we've talked about how to set up your lights. But now, let's talk about how to set up your sound. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you that when it comes to sound, that's an area where most people struggle. And not just YouTubers, but I know professional videographers who do this for a living and have been shooting videos for a year who still struggle with their audio because it's not something that you can see. You, you know, we can see a camera, we can see what the camera's pointed at, and right away, you can all probably tell me if this camera's pointed at David or not, right? Mm -hmm. So if there's a problem, I don't see David, you can look at that right away and tell me, well, there's the problem pointed at David, all right? <clears throat> But now, if I put this microphone on David, and after he's done talking, I take the microphone and I listen to the recording, and I can't hear him, what's the problem? Sometimes. But that's good thinking. That shows that you're, you're thinking about, well, that's good. So a lot of people are going to really struggle with, you know, because it's not... 
It's not something you can see. Does it make sense? Um, but that's good. That shows that you're thinking about it. So sometimes, what she was mentioning is sometimes when you have a microphone clipped to you like this, sometimes, um, you know, depending on what type of shirt you're wearing, your shirt might ruffle and create sound. Um, so, really quick, this is the microphone that I use for a lot of my YouTube videos. I use it a lot of times when I'm shooting uh, wedding videos and I just really quickly have to get a microphone on somebody and then really quick I gotta get off and give it to somebody else. Now, when it comes to microphones, there are just as many microphones out there that as there are cameras. Why do I choose this one? This is the Tascam DR10L. And I choose it because it's really the simplest microphone I've ever found. A lot of microphones, you have to plug something into it. Um, you have to run a cable somewhere else. You have to go through the menu and change a bunch of settings. You might have to work with something called phantom power. Has anyone ever heard of phantom power before? So there's a lot of technical things with, uh, with audio equipment. And with the DR10L, I just don't have to deal with any of those things. Um, so the DR10L is not actually the microphone. It's this piece right here. It looks like an old iPod shuffle. Um, and basically, this is a recording device and my sound is not going to the camera, it's going here to be recorded. We always record our audio to a separate device because you're going to get better quality that way than if we're recording uh, either through the camera's internal microphone or to the camera. Now, there are exceptions. There are some times when you do want to plug your microphone into the camera. I'm not saying never do that. I'm saying nine times out of ten, you want to record your audio to a separate device. This is a device that's made for the sole purpose of recording sound, so it's gonna get the best sound that you can get. And it comes with this microphone. This is a omnidirectional microphone, which means that it can hear the sound if you're over here. It can hear the sound if you're over here. Here, 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 here. Doesn't matter what direction you're in, it'll hear you. Now, depending on how close or how far you are, you might be louder or quieter in the recording. But it can record in all directions because it is omnidirectional. There are a lot of microphones that are what's called unidirectional, which means you're only going to record sound in this direction or in that general direction. And so sometimes a lot of people will buy a unidirectional mic and they'll be like, how come I can't hear this person when they're standing over here? Well, it's because the microphone only records sound in that direction. So with an omnidirectional mic, you eliminate some of the uh, factors that might ruin your recording. So you, with this lapel omnidirectional mic, I can just clip this here onto my shirt, and it will hear me. And then all I have to do when I'm done recording is take out the SD card, just like I do with my camera, and plug it into my computer, and I can get my files, and I can edit. What card? Um, it's just any micro SD card. So it doesn't have to be a specific name brand or anything. So any... Any micro SD card will fit in a device like this. Now, there are probably a dozen different audio recording devices you might want to consider. This is just the one I think is the easiest to use. So when you're doing your research, when you're looking up an audio device, I, I recommend Tascam products. Um, I recommend Zoom products. Um, Sennheiser products are the best, but they're generally going to be more expensive. Uh, so you can look at different products and find something that you like. And like I said, most of them are going to come with um, different ports that you can plug in different types of cables and different types of microphones. The reason I'm telling you about this one is because you only have to worry about one microphone rather than trying to set up a whole 
uh, elaborate riff. So.